we are on the, the start of the um, TT electric bike race, and off goes Mark. Uh, basically, the only way I could start this is just to say that I knew that there was going to be uh, some trouble here. But the only thing I could really come up with, the only way I was going to beat him on this, uh, he was riding a new bike, I'm on the old bike from last year and you know, a couple weeks before the race has uh, got going, got a call from Michael Sisson and he says, uh, you know, we're not sure if the new bike's going to work, we're not, you know, it's supposed to be better on paper, but it's not, you know, it's never been ridden and we think that the, the old bike's going to do the business, so um, we should put you on the old bike to make sure it works. Well, the new bike is actually considerably better. The, the 2011 Lotus Assist bike is uh, you know, lighter, it's faster, it's got more energy reserve, and it handles better. So after practice, I knew that uh, we were going to be in for a little bit of trouble. So I'm thinking, you know what, um, the only thing I can do is try to conserve some battery and let him catch me, jump in behind him on the draft, and see if I can't conserve some energy by you know, um, reducing the wind resistance. And at the end, hopefully, when, after he tows me around, I get to the top of Hale with Rise, make a break. There's a bit of a chest match now. You, gotta, you can't use the thing up. I mean, you can't go full blast. It's half throttle the whole lap. And I was hoping that at the very least, um, I would have enough reserve in the tank to uh, to get to the line, kind of like a Tour de France thing, where they make a break right at the end. I tried my best. We got down the hill at the top of the hill, going down the hill, and I, I made a break for it, hoping that maybe he would use a little bit too much juice chasing me at that point, and not that he wouldn't finish, I, I wanted him to finish only second, so the other thing is I didn't want him to break the 100 mile an hour mark. So. I was just dying to go quicker, you know, hold it flat out, but um, obviously we can't do that because of uh, how, long, uh, how long the battery lasts. Malagari, and uh, that corner is so fast, just it kept tucked in, um, didn't shut off, just uh, it was about half throttle and through there, but must have been about 130 through there. Into Crosby, another fast scary corner, bike handled perfectly for these fast corners, it was, it was really good, it kept real tucked in, and I think I just got the first couple of glimpses of uh, Mark by this point. So here comes Michael Rudd and passing me. Um, <laughs> at this point, he actually had a little bit of steam and I'm like, I'm going to have to use a little bit of battery to, to just to keep up with that bike because it was really fast. I've got to do it. I cannot lose this draft. Here is a section where I couldn't really draft him too much because even at the slower speeds of the electric bikes, um, we're still do, you know, doing probably about 100, and, 100 to 120-ish around uh, in and out of some of these corners, so you gotta have the visibility. You just cannot be a foot off of his rear wheel and be able to safely negotiate those curves because you just can't see. So if you can see him kind of popping out of the bubble and I'm looking left and right and I'm actually trying to look beyond him to make sure that I don't uh, time it wrong. Mark, he's lifting his helmet up there just to look over the top of me, getting very close, which uh, was a bit worrying, but I didn't know anything about it. These section of corners coming off um, on, on this bike, it was, they were fantastic, you know, the real fast corners, very flowing, and the bike handled so well for these. hard braking area, I was able to get some knee down there and uh, scrape the knee puck, get back up on him. Again, I'm using a little bit of reserve. White wall. <sighs> yeah. uh, it's cool about the TT, these real roads things, is they're so, everything's so close to you that you've got this relative speed 
right in your helmet. I mean, it's nothing like a short circuit to sprint race where, you know, the gravel tracks are far away and the, the fans are pulled far away from, from the racetrack. This is like right on top of your elbows. And this is the coolest video I've ever seen to show how close we get to some of the stuff. You can see we're almost brushing, you know, the grass and stuff. This is a really cool fast section. Mike was riding really good. Um, he had a lot of corner speed through all through all these big fast sweepers, and you know it's basically all I could do. You can see I'm in a full tuck here. It's basically all I could do to just really just keep with them. this corner his bike really accelerated well here and I was, that's all I could do really just get back in there dude you know get that draft coming up to Kirk Michael which is the, the village hard braking making sure you just trail brake nicely into there Mike's looks like he's hauling butt right there I love it now this is where um, the Kirk Michael is it's, it's quite cool because it's just through a village I mean it's literally through houses and pubs and you get the the most incredible sensation of speed right through this.
up to the famous Balak Bridge to jump. And you'll see him catch a little bit of air, and you can see me catch a little bit of air, and I'll tell you, it's good fun. It, I, was, I was enjoying this. This is the Balak Bridge now. This is very difficult to get the stop for. And I'm sure the bike jumps in the area, which you didn't tell me, but it's uh, not to jump in poetry. It's, um, it um, handled that quite well. He was uh, instructed to go fast. I'm instructed to go flat out and use a little battery up, try to get the radar and set some records, you know, with some new electric bike stuff. There he goes. He's he's on the gas. There's nothing I could do. I'm flat out. I don't know what he's doing. He said he had more in the tank than he's used at Solby Strait, which he did 149 mile an hour, I believe. But check him out. He's gone. Well, I had to start to shut the throttle off. It just for the end of the straight. It just the speed trap's about now. And I had to shut off before then. Hard braking. I'm just trying to do the very best I can. You can see him in the sights right up there. I'm like just as deep as I could possibly go to make up that ground and get back in that draft without using too much energy. So just barely made that corner. I'm on the gas. Again, I'm going to use a little bit more reserve than I would normally do out of these corners. So it's like do not lose the draft. Well, it was very good for these parts. It was no problem at all, but very bumpy sections. line in here, you just kind of just, just threw it in that corner, pretty good, nice to see. It's not very often you get to ride this close to another guy, especially somebody as, with the quality of Michael Rudder, he's one of the best riders in the world in my opinion. And, uh, it's just good fun just to be able to watch him and, and you know, kind of try to keep up. Hard braking, hard braking. I believe this is in going into Ramsey, close to Ramsey. Don't hit the back of him, idiot. You don't want to be that guy to take us both out. Can you imagine what a moron I would be if I smashed into the back of Mike Rudder and took both the motor assist bikes out on the electric bike race? This is going up to the, the second commentary box at Ramsey, I think. So this is when they, you know, we've got any pit boards or any people that let us know now. LCS coming in there, the commentary box. So here I'm coming up to this uh, this this hairpin, and I, I actually consciously made a decision to go to the right, way wide here, so he wouldn't see me or hear me, because he could just have the peripheral of his vision. I didn't want him to see that I'm right on his ass. So I went wide right there, just just 
to try my hardest to keep him from like, oh man, that sucker's drafting me all the way, you know, and have him like maybe try harder or something. I didn't want to kind of inspire him to go any quicker because it's all I can do to hang on and not use up the battery as much as I can because of course, trying to stick to the plan, uh, we're going to try to get to the top of the hill with Rise and make a break for it and just see if we got what it takes to, to get that 10 seconds back and, you know, maybe he'll slow a little bit. I don't know why I've tended to lose something there. When someone behind us is there, I was right here. This is the first time I thought that it was with Mark. Going up the mountain now, you can feel that it's such a drag going up the mountain. It's, it's everything's hard work. Uh, even on my um, on the Ducati, you know, you can feel it. The bike is just struggling to get up these. It's a real steep hill. And you keep travelling up and up and up for um, a few miles. This is the place where I was looking at and the power was going down quite a lot. And I was you know, thinking it's going to be close to, um, you know, for us to get him back. So you just ease off and you want to go quicker, but. Um, All right, Mountain Miles coming up, the next right-hander, so I'm, I'm, I'm again trying not to lose his draft because I'm afraid that he's going to go pull the trigger on that bike and just, just absolutely walk him. This, this is Hellwood Rise, so here I'm thinking to myself, all right, dude, this is it. If you're going to win this TT0 race and try to break the 100, you're going to have to do it now. This is up according to plan. Everything's been working out. I knew he was going to catch me, and I knew he was going to draft him, and luckily I haven't lost the draft. All right, this is it. I'm gonna go for it. Here goes Mark now. He does his thing. He's in channel. So now I just pull him right, right in behind him, and uh, let him do the hard, hard work now. And this is when I'm leading, finally leading back again, and I'm flat out. I mean, this is not 50-40% uh, throttle anymore. Oh my God, I thought he's going past into here. All blows on me going to Windy Corner, and he left two big marks on the foot pegs there. But uh, it 
was uh, I thought I would like to have gone here quicker. He was uh, he was flying around there. Try not to fly off the cliff here. Make this corner. I'm flat out, absolutely flat out, and I'm wondering where Michael is. I don't want to look back and, you know, of course, and break your, your uh, slipstream. Good thing the speed of uh, my bike, the new bike, I catch you on quite, quite quickly for this bit. Now I was thinking I've got um, so much power left. Um, Try and do this 100 mile an hour lap. I wanted to have a good run for the last few miles. Um, looking back then, now I should have gone just a little bit um, before, but it's easy to say that now. But at the time, I just wanted to get back and you know, win the race. So down here, I um, got right up behind the uh, mark, and I thought I should have, um, I should have gone. And go like uh, go like hell and try and get it back um, to try and get that to uh, hundred mile an hour. Lap. Come flat out, and he hasn't come by me yet. I thought maybe he'd come by me on the brakes, but he didn't do it. So I'm like, am I going to actually stay in front of him? This might be cool. Maybe he's running out of juice. Maybe this is working out. And then drove around the outside of him. Surprised him, so um, he couldn't get a toe on me. And I'm like, oh really? I ain't winning shit. <laughs> Nice race.